on this episode of Sailing L'Apéro. Now, you may be wondering how we got here. So let's go back for a second. As you may remember, we decided to sail down to Trinidad at the last minute as the threat of a tropical depression was headed for Grenada. But when we got here 24 hours later, the updated forecast now had the storm tracking straight for Trinidad. So we decided to haul the boat out and prep for the storm. We just finished uh, securing the boat before the storm hits. Supposedly tonight, we did the best we could. We pulled off the dodger, we took off the jib, anything loose took it off the boat and then at this point it's like if anything happens to it it's sort of out of our hands um so yeah we'll see what the status report is 24 hours from now luckily the storm passed over trinidad with nothing more than some heavy rain but when the sun came out and we got back to the boat we discovered this don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode so what we're fixing today is a problem that happens fairly frequently with boats. Uh, it's referred to as a keel smile or issues with the keel to hull joint. And uh, basically what we need to do is we need to dig up some of the sealant uh, that is attaching the keel to the boat uh, in order to let that thing dry out because right now it's full of moisture. Um, so that's what we're going to get to. Believe it or not, this is the first time we're putting on coveralls. Here goes nothing. I'd like to add as well that when you're looking at YouTube, thinking about buying boats and stuff like that, nobody ever tells you this. <laughs> it's just beautiful beaches. They don't tell you, oh, you're gonna have to be a mechanic as well and an electrician. How do you, what do you know about fiberglass? Oh, maybe they do tell you. Maybe I just didn't pay attention. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they told us. Yeah, they told us. <laughs> Taking a little lunch break. We've done probably like an eighth of the keel. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> look at this power stick. Like, look at that push. Being your big girlfriend. Power stance has gotten even wider. I think this is a really good look for me. Took a while. Yeah. We're done for the day. We're gonna circle back with Mark, the guy who's helping us out with this project, and uh, sort of explain that we're finding two different color putties, one of which we suspect is a wet version of the other putty. Yeah. Um, and if that's the case, then maybe it means we don't have to grind the whole length of the keel, which would be awesome. Um, but it does mean maybe we need to go deeper until we find like that white putty everywhere. Yeah. So I think next week Sam at some point will come out here and meet with Mark just to get a his opinion on it and we'll go from there. Great job, bud. You too. <laughs> Howdy. So basically we're taking off the sealant wherever it's cracked and uh, stopped adhering. But what we're finding as we remove that sealant is really there's only like a surface layer that's covering a void inside there. So you'll remove something like this and it will just be nothing back there. As we pull the sealant off, there seems to be these bits of uh, what looks like maybe already cracked fiberglass laminate. We called in Mark to take a closer look and unfortunately for us, this had just become a much bigger project. We have to drop our keel. Uh, therefore we have to drop our mast, <laughs> therefore we have to break the fiberglass box that's reinforcing the post inside of our boat. So here we are uh, grinding the back half of our keel out before we move the boat. We have to move the boat to the other side of the yard to put it on the keel stand. Yeah. Buy a boat, they said. Half of our keel bolts are under our water tank, our aluminum inox water tank. So 
we are gonna go ahead and disconnect that. Yeah. <laughs> Seven for what the mast. And you can see the mast is it's been reinforced here, probably with a plate and fiberglass. More on those keel bolts later. For now, we had to switch to disconnecting all of the cables that run up our mast. Yeah, these are the only ones that I can see. So these are the only ones that we have to disconnect. So basically disconnecting them means meaning when we lift the mast this way that they can come freely up with them. All right, let's get out of this sun and let's disconnect them from down below. Okay. okay. Now is where the brain power starts. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with a quick win. Play a disconnect a little white for me. Boom. Disconnected! One. Done. If only they had all been so easy. This is a new one. It's like the, uh, the lunge. It's, uh, it's, it's called the release your psoas and also <laughs> diagnose your electrical problems. <laughs> We gotta get to the wires that are underneath this sea hood here, and that would be pretty simple, except somebody f glued <laughs> this piece of wood straight across <laughs> where the sea hood should be able to detach from the rest of the boat. Just glued it, probably with 5200, which, if you don't know, is essentially cement, <laughs> or worse than. So Claire's trying to persuade me not to uh, just rip this shit out right now. I want to rip it out, just not today. So we're trying to figure out if we can just loosen, if we can take these, the first set of screws out, if we can get enough space to get our hands in there to push a cable through that we need to disconnect the mast. Yay. Okay, here's my solution. Right? Mm -hmm. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. Ready, ready? Okay, here's my solution. Take a saw and <laughs> cut right down the center here. I don't want any. I just want this. I just want to cut the cable. Isn't that cable broken? Ah, that, Listen to me. No. Don't we need to replace that cable? No. Why? I thought the transducer to this cable wasn't working. This is exactly the cable. It Guess who won the argument? I did. See who is coming out. Hey, you Me? All right. All this for one bloody cable. Big day today. We're dropping the mast. Mast day. Mast day. Master, 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 master. 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 side of the yard and it's evident that the boats on this side are the ones that need serious repair and we're now among them <laughs> cool home sweet home for the next little while hey mark how are you how's it going well we moved the boat 
and now we're in our new spot and getting ready to drop the mats next. about our decision to leave passing the cables through the deck to 10 minutes before the crane arrives. You know, <laughs> probably not the best. I thought about it, but thankfully dad said to save the day. <laughs> I think you're gonna get some And just look at what we're doing. Like, why are we afraid of lightning right now? They're by far the highest metal point in the sky. Sun's out. Here we go. Take two. to grind out the fiberglass covering our kink post uh, base and our boat currently looks like the set of like Dexter. Ta -da! Starting to get used to this look. <laughs> that doesn't even seem like it's just sticking up the bottom though. <laughs> Tell the people. You tell the people. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are removing the compression post. By hook or by crook, we're gonna have access to that final keel bolt. And then, next week, we're gonna drop the keel. Ew. Look at that, that's the face of determination. <laughs> Show me your face. Ah! Game face. Yesterday we tried to take out the compression post. It's a bit bigger of a job than we thought it was, but today we think we have the plan. Step one, we're gonna floss the top of the compression post. The top sits right below the deck and it's currently filled with blue goop. Don't know what it is, need to get it out. Step two, we're gonna go to the bottom of the compression post and we're gonna grind with a grinder. Scary, by the way, uh, at least three sides of it. Step three, we're gonna take a big piece of wood medium piece of wood. And then we're going to hammer it into the compression post and try to basically start to walk it out. If that doesn't work, we're gonna take one of the lines, we're gonna tie it around the compression post, we're gonna run it back to these winches, and then we're gonna to start to crank. And we're gonna hope that we don't die in a sort of like cartoon-esque, the compression post flies at us and then crushes us to death. Wish us luck. a shit show. <laughs> Is it even a boat anymore? I just got it to move. After hours of chiseling, grinding, hammering, and vacuuming, here she was, the final keel bolt. You really look like Buzz Lightyear. Ready, 
Now it was time to loosen all of our keel bolts. cracked off in a good way. Now I'm gonna loosen the bolts completely. Alright. Our boat is officially in thirds. All right, so basically we got the keel off and now I got to remove this gasket, the broken one, uh, and then sand it down, get it ready for a new gasket. Getting there. Whoa. There's my gasket right there. It's been three hours and to be honest, a little demoralized. These studs are taking forever to clean. I've got some of them kind of okay, but a lot of them still look like <laughs> This is gonna take at least another day. This stuff really reminds me of the character in Spirited Away, that like black gunk monster that like just as you touch it just turns everything into black sludge. So what we really want to do is take it and move outwards and then like this and then like this and you want to try to create a square. Okay. What do you think? Like really cool arts and crabs. Like high stakes arts and crabs. <laughs> Today we're making the fiberglass gasket uh, for our keel to replace the one that was cracked. So today should be the last day that our boat is in three pieces. So right now basically the boat's getting lifted up back onto the keel uh, with the gasket in place with sort of like a plastic sheet with wax on it so that it doesn't stick and then tomorrow the boat will go back up and the sort of like layer of separation will be removed and then we will tighten things up once and for all. Check out how nice and clean our keel looks. Look at this shiny lead. Pretty nice. Let's see what Sam is doing up here. I like to look at our rudder and the little like white patch there. And I like to think about how once upon a time we thought our rudder was like the big problem of this off season. It took about a day to fix. Yeah. Boats always just keeping things in perspective for you. Explain to me why we have two tape measures hanging off the side of our boat. Okay, 
So basically, we're trying to make the keel fit perfectly to the bottom of our boat. But to do that, we've got to lower it down onto the keel um, when it's got some fiberglass in between and basically you squish it and the fiberglass takes the perfect shape of our boat. But the only way that works is if we lower it completely evenly. So the tape measures there are basically there to help us, guide us as we lower the boat to make sure that we're not tilted this way or that way. Very sophisticated solution. <laughs> When a boat is initially built, the keel is made by pouring lead into a mold. Because lead is a soft metal, the surface of the keel is not necessarily completely flat and level in all places. So a fiberglass gasket can be used to match the keel to the hull of the boat. In our case, at some point, that gasket broke. So we had to rebuild it using sheets of fiberglass to ensure a perfect fit. All right, so this is what it hardened to overnight. So now we're gonna lift her one more time, uh, fill her full of sealant, put her back down, and then that's it. So fingers crossed. This is day three of trying to get the keel back on. Uh, boat spent the night in the travel lift. Um, hopefully we're all done today. I am running on empty. Uh, Claire's a bit more refreshed. She's taking the lead this morning. Hopefully for the last time, our boat is going up. <laughs> we need to get the other one going, eh? Okay. Yeah. Now a lot of this is gonna... Ooze out. It's gonna ooze out. But it's better that than to have a gap. Yep. Right, come down. A little more. Done, done. Right. Okay, come down. Come down. Yeah, go. Go. Uh, that side down. Right, hold on. That side down. Left side down. Forward down. Right, hold. Goodbye, Kiel Stan. <laughs> Sometimes people say shit like, I don't know if your wife's strong enough to do this. You might want to grab a guy. With one last tighten of the keel bolts, the keel was complete and we could finally start putting our boat back together. So we've gotten to the point where we're getting ready to put the mask back on. While it's down here, might as well replace some of these electronics that are looking a little worse for the way. Well, this one actually wasn't even working. <laughs> we haven't had, since we've gotten this boat, we haven't had a working uh, transducer or wind instrument. A funny story, Claire keeps throwing her neck out because she keeps doing this. Which direction is the wind coming from? Are you ready? 
Yeah. Scalpel. Scalpel. <laughs> oh, maybe those ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see it, it's right there. Good morning. Today we just came back to run some more cables through our mast and discovered that they replaced our rigging. Look at that shiny new rigging. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. So shiny. It all goes according to plan. Our mask will be back on by the end of the day today. Strut, 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 strut. <laughs> To do. Our friend Bruno came to help this morning. Hello. Our hatch was open. Now it's tool soup. Together, isn't it? it looks like home. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Got some nice cushions. The boat still needs a very good clean, so don't look at that. But these bad boys came here all the way from California. Those were we got those pillows for our very first apartment together in Burbank. Yeah. Going in the bottom. Happy launch day, beautiful people. We're wearing Christmas hats. Got rainbows coming in through the windows. It's gonna be a good day. Uh, we're gonna have to be pretty diligent this time because we did take our keel off. So we're just gonna have to inspect to make sure there's no water coming in when our boat hits the water. So fingers crossed. Huge thank you to Chris and Peak Yacht Services, Mark at Dynamite Marine, and Paul Amon, AKA English, for helping us with this big project. We definitely could not have done it without all of you.